Hey guys, I want to go over quickly how the flow works for OAuth, how the whole thing works, because there's a lot of stuff that happens um, very quickly and it can be hard to visualize all that's happening. And I've been getting a lot of questions about it, and I just want to clarify how it all works. So here's a diagram representing how it all starts and how it goes through. Then after I explain this, I'll show you this how OAuth works in action. So first all starts with a client wanting to log in usually with OAuth. That's usually how it works. So they'll click a button and um, when they click the button, what they'd like to do is to log into your website with maybe their Google account, with their Facebook account, with something. Um, so they'll click on that link and what you'll do is you'll first redirect to your server. Now for me, I just call this URL F login for Facebook login. Um, and then here, after I you know, get the request, I know that my user wants to log in with Facebook, what I'll do is I actually can't log them in with Facebook. Only Facebook server can, or Google, or GitHub, or anyone I want to do OAuth with. So I have to send this user's request, and I have to make a request, basically. Um, instead of them coming here to this URL, I send them to GitHub, or Facebook, or Google server. So the client first comes to ours, then we directly send them over to GitHub servers or Facebooks, whoever we want. And then here the user will put in some credentials um, or whatnot. But note, they're on you know www.facebook.com or Google. They're not on our server anymore, so we have no idea what's going on. We've basically lost the state of what's happening. Um, and we have no knowledge of what's going on. So whatever they they do on the, you know, when they're talking to Facebook, whether they type in their username, password, we have no idea what exactly they're doing. But when they finish, what happens is Facebook says, hey, either the person logged in good or they didn't. Either way, what they're gonna do is they're gonna send what's called a callback URL. They're gonna call our server and send some data. So they're gonna give us a callback and say, hey, this user is trying to log in here. Here's their information. So they'll usually send a payload of JSON with the, um, a lot of times, and this is what you really care about, is the email of the user. So with that email, you can then create account or log them in. You can get the data on your server and create tokens and send that to the client. But until um, Facebook server or whatever calls our server, we're kind of just sitting there waiting for the callback to happen, but we don't hang this request, right? Because the client's actually no longer on our server. So we actually just immediately lose the request when the user clicks on this little link. They're on Facebook's um, stuff. So we have no control over them. We're just waiting here. We don't even, like, they could just close the tab and never come back to our website. We're waiting on them to finish whatever they're doing with Facebook, come back over here, um, and Facebook will automatically tell us, hey, the user is done. Here's the information. And then we'll go ahead and take this information that we get here. We'll search our database if we need to for the email. If it's not there, we'll create a new user. If it is there, what we'll do is we'll take that and create uh, JWT tokens. Now, usually for me, I'm using two tokens, a, J a regular one and then a refresh token. So I'll create both of those. And then I'll actually redirect the client back to the client website. So now, and when I redirect them, the whole point of this whole thing was to log the user in. So when everything's all undone, I send the tokens in the URL back to the client and the client saves those tokens in uh, local storage so they can do further requests. So that's the whole thing of how this is happening. I'm gonna show you real quick this in action and then we can see the different network requests that are going off where you can see each one where we're hitting our server, then going to Facebook's, then coming back and then finally hitting the client. So here's a React application I have running. If I click on this link, um, it'll actually take me to F login like I was talking about and start the process. And then we'll end up here at the end. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna inspect and click the network tab. And I'm gonna preserve the log so we can see all the different requests that are happening in the middle. And also I have my server up and running right now so it should work. So we go ahead and click on this. And we notice in a blink of an eye, we're already back here on localhost, and you notice we're on a different page. So let's see all that happened here. So we first started by going to F login, like I talked about. 
Um, and then that's when we redirect to Facebook server. So you'll notice how we're on, um, we go to facebook.com and we're telling Facebook that this is an OAuth request. And then you'll notice we're back to our site, localhost 3000. This is a pretty small font, but it says um, localhost 3000. Can we see the headers? Um, we can see we're going to localhost 3000 off Facebook, and this is the callback URL. And this is where Facebook will give us the information um, that we need, the payload. And then after that, we notice we come back here. So I redirect from our server back here, and in the URL right here, these are called query parameters. I'm passing back the token, that's one, and also the refresh token, that's a second token. And then I'm saving that in local storage. So we can if we go to application, we can see both refresh token and token are now saved in local storage. So that is usually how OAuth works and how the workflow is. You'll send it over to your server, which sends it to whoever server you want to log in with. It'll come back to your server to save and finalize anything and then redirect to the client and save any details you need to. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope it helps you understand how OAuth works. And uh, thanks for watching.